Hi there, folks. This is Levi Kuhn at Kuhn Truck and RV, your Class B and B Plus RV specialist. Please check out our website at truckandrv.com. That's truckandrv.com to view all of our inventory. I will put a direct link to this particular RV in the description below. If you follow that link, it's going to take you over to our website where you can see the pricing and the information on this unit. However, once this unit is sold, that link will be removed as this web page will no longer be live. We are a full-service dealer. We do offer warranty as well as financing. If you have any questions on this unit, please give us a call at 419-899-2020. 419-899-2020. All righty, folks. It's time to tour the inside of this 2006 Road Trek 190 Versatile. This one has 44,029 miles on it. Again, that's 44,029 miles on it. Uh, we do like to nickname some of our units here. Uh, this was not actually one that me or Luke had picked out to nickname, uh, but the guys were making some jokes in the shop saying that they never gonna get to give any of these units a nickname. Uh, so without our knowledge, they actually nicknamed this unit uh, the Nugget. That is the nickname that they have dubbed to it. I uh, didn't even know it, honestly, until I saw uh, the key tag that they had made out, the Nugget. I'm assuming it's because of the gold color, uh, but they had a pretty good kick about that and had a good time. Uh, anyways, back to it here. The front seats, both of them here do swivel. You're going to be able to create two twin beds up here. You're going to replicate this same process on the driver's side as you would the passenger side here. Uh, it actually works better if you have this chair swiveled so the bottom is facing out. But for video purposes, so we can get a good look at this front seats here, uh, I have this swiveled inwards. This will swivel all the way around so you can face the rear of the coach as well. But to make the bed, it works best if you have it swiveled so the seat bottom is facing the door. Uh, you're then going to use the seat back and the bottom. They're basically going to bridge this gap between here uh, to create a twin size bed up here. So in this unit, you can sleep up to four people. Uh, again, the driver's seat does also swivel. It does not swivel as far around as what the passenger seat does because the seat back hits the steering wheel there. Again, you're going to create, replicate that process and create yourself a small twin bed on this side of the unit. We do have um, a total of six seat belts in this unit. We have both of these jump seats here have seat belts. The two front seats have seat belts. And then the back seats there also have two more seat belts. So we have six belted seats in this unit. Uh, I think I went over this chair already, but give you another look here if I didn't. Very good condition on all the cloth upholstery in this unit. Our control center is up here. Remote start for the Gen Onan 2800 generator is showing 78 hours. This one's always a big question mark. It's because it's not labeled. This is for the porch light, which is on the outside of the unit. We have our monitor panel here. If we hold this test switch, it's going to light up our gauges. We have our water pump switch and then our battery disconnect. The crank to crank up our TV awning is right here. This knob, use that to crank it up. This handle here, this actually pulls down as well. Once you get it up and you can directionalize your antenna at that point to get to the best reception possible uh, for the area that you're in. Side windows up here, this lower portion here does open. It cranks and tips out. The bottom portion is screened. Somebody had mounted something to this door at one point. As you can see, there's two small little holes that they drilled to it to mount something to this door. All of our manuals are located in the Road Trek bag there. Coming into the kitchen area. Uh, the fridge door swings towards the front, so I'll try to show you that on the way back towards the front, but that is a three-way. Some storage underneath the counter here. Nice, easy access to the back of the water heater. There are bypass valves there, so you can quickly access those, bypass your water heater, and you can be winterized pretty quickly. Pretty good counter area here. The sink is a single basin. It does have the cover, cutting board for that, so when you need more counter space, you can place that in there. Same for the cooktop, a two burner cooktop, cover for that when you need counter space. Microwave oven. They do a wonderful job of using every square inch possible for storage. These two switches are a range hood, or the fan and light for the range hood. These are nice deep storage compartments. They go quite a ways back there. Got one of those foil Things I believe for the windshield. Again, they go back there nice and deep. 
Cool Cat heat pump is gonna give you electric heat down to a certain outside ambient temperature that we have found to be roughly 40 degrees. Below 40 degrees, you're gonna to have to kick on your propane furnace. It will, keep a, it will keep it nice and warm in here with the propane furnace. That Cool Cat heat pump is also gonna be the thing that gives you your air conditioning. Backing up a step here, our wardrobe. Uh, this is a two part door. You can see there's a hinge there. So this actually folds out. And when you're using the restroom, it's gonna fill this gap here to create your privacy towards the rear of the coach. Table legs on the wall there, the four leaf, uh, what people like to call it, the four leaf clover table that uh, is proprietary or mainly used in road trek. Propane furnace is located down there. This is also um, going to be, or could be used as your wardrobe if you wanna do that. A couple little shelves up here. Again, two more seat belts back here. So we have a total of six seat belts. We do have two table positions in this unit. One is located right there. Uh, you can put the table back here. You can put the table up front and there are two tables. There's a smaller table and a larger table. Uh, the squeakiness there is my socks. I take my shoes off in the winter time here so I don't get snow and uh, ice and water tracked in these things. Uh, the larger table is there. You're gonna lose, use that larger table when you wanna make the bed. So that table is gonna sit on this little ledge here that goes all the way around. It's going to fill in this space here, then you're then going to use these back cushions. There's one on either side, lay those in here to fill up the center aisle. Uh, this is a versatile, the versatile is intended to sleep east to west, crossways in this unit. Um, the size of this bed, 50, or excuse me, 73 inches. So if you're 73 inches or shorter, uh, you're going to be able to lay in here comfortably. If you're over 73, which is 6'1", uh, you might have to scrunch your knees a little bit, but 73 inches this way and 52 inches this way. So plenty wide this way to sleep two people, and then 73, which is six feet one inch this way. Um, headroom down here in the shower pan. Uh, ceiling height is about six, one and a half. Um, and with a step up here, that goes up about three inches. Um, so you lose a little bit of headroom back here, but up here in the shower pan, six, one and a half, that goes up about three inches. The back side windows, both of these do open. The bottom portion has a crank right there that tips out. The bottom portion is screened. Same for the window on the driver's side of the unit here. Looks like we've got some remotes and manuals in here. DVD player, more storage in there. We do have a 19 inch flat screen TV here. This is on a swivel mount, so you can swing this around uh, towards the front, towards the passenger side here. Wherever you want to swing that around, depending on where you want to watch TV. Again, that is a 19-inch flat screen that is on a swivel mount. I uh, mentioned the, this kind of already, but let's take a look at it here. Bottom portion does tip out, and it is screened. Got a cup holder on the wall there, a 110 outlet. Our fuse panel and circuit breaker is located down here. Where does one go to, where does one go to learn how to make a banana split? They go to Sunday school. Thermostat for the, turn the light on there, let's show you that that works. I just forgot to turn it on. Uh, thermostat for the propane furnace as well as the Cool Cat heat pump. That is all on one thermostat right there. Um, again, back here, it's a little wrinkled because I sat on it, but cushions are in good shape. There is one spot over here. Um, one, two, three, looks like something either sat on there, but very, very minute. We do just like to point out the small things. Let you know what you're getting before you travel out here. The Road Trek Isle Shower, if you do not follow our channel, the way that these work. So I showed you this um, door here. This door, when it was open, it has a second panel. This front door here is the same. The second panel here is gonna swing out towards the front. You close the shades here in the kitchen. Then you create your privacy towards the front and the rear when you have those doors open. You're gonna take your shower standing in the aisle right here excuse me, this, uh, this is a uh, trench drain here, basically. So your water is going to run to that trench drain there. And this whole gray area is all a fiberglass drain pan. So you don't really have to worry about any water getting around. Uh, if you're parked level, the water's gonna run to the drain there and drain. But you're gonna stand right here. When you take your shower, you're gonna pull the shower curtain, which is located right there. Pull that out and around you. You can turn on the um, fantastic fan there to exhaust any heat steam uh, while you're taking your shower. But you're gonna stand in the aisle, take your shower, you're then gonna dry off, drop your towel on the floor, dry this floor off, and you are ready to get back to camping. The valve for the shower, shower head there itself. 
refrigerator. I promised to show you this on the way back towards the front. This is a three-way, so it's going to run on 12 volt electricity, 110 volt electricity, or propane gas. It does have the small freezer compartment up top. Again, both of these seats have seat belts as well as the front two. Location for the table up front there. Switch for our water heater is located right here. Another 110 outlet. Uh, overall, a very, very nice clean unit. Uh, if you continue to stick around and watch the outside portion, you'll see that the outside shined up beautifully. Stripes are still in very good condition. Uh, as you can see here, the interior cleaned up very nicely as well. Uh, low miles with 44,000 miles. I believe Road Trek maybe calls this their map pocket. It's a small one, uh, manual up there or something. Nice little pocket when you're driving. Sitting up here, you can uh, throw some maps or paperwork and stuff like that up there. Again, uh, very clean unit, 44,000 miles, Chevy 3500 chassis, all loaded up, power windows, locks, tilt, cruise, uh, CD player. I am going to give this one a rating overall uh, for the age and the mileage. I'm going to call this thing a nine and a half. Uh, very, very clean unit. Nice specimen. If you have any questions on this one, give us a call at Coon Truck and RV, the best little RV dealer around since 1976. All right, folks, we're going to run around the outside of this Road Trek 190 Versatile. We are 20 and a half feet from bumper to bumper. We have four Bridgestones tires with date codes of 0616. We have an 11 foot awning. This does sit on the Chevy 3500 chassis. It is powered by the six liter Vortec V8 engine. This one again has very low miles on it. Uh, outside shined up beautifully. Stripes, paint, everything very good condition. Outside of this unit shined up very, very nicely. First door down here, just a small storage compartment. This here is the vent for your propane furnace. The coach battery is located behind this panel right here. There's a thumb screw right there. You take that thumb screw out, lift this panel up and off, and your coach battery is located right behind that panel there. You have another view down the passenger side of this unit, but as you can see, stripes, paint, everything, very, very good condition. Coming around to the back of the coach, we do have a tow package. Spare tire is here. Uh, they put the spare tire on the rear of the vehicle right here because the generator is mounted up underneath where the spare tire would be mounted on a typical uh, Chevy Express van. If we remove this little panel here, that's going to give you access to your propane tank. Driver's side here is the same as the passenger side. Uh, stripes in very good condition. Paint shined up beautifully. Gasoline tank. Vent and access to our water heater. Vent and access to the back of our refrigerator. We have our city water connection, our outside shower, our generator. I'll try to get you a little peek of it here. It's mounted underneath, just behind the axle. Shore power cord is laying right there. A uh, couple extra cords that we left in there for you. Fresh water hose, pretty decent sized storage compartment there. Um, our black, our sewer dumps are located right here, black and gray handles. Uh, this lid flips up and you can twist your bayonet standard um, RV sewer connection on there to dump your tanks. Give you one last look down the driver's side here. But again, stripes everything there's a minor nick here and there, like that, but uh, very, very, very good, very, very good condition. Sorry, I'm having a hard time speaking today on the paint and stripes on the shoe.